Hello children, I am Smita Manoj and I welcome you all to the English Literature class. Today I am here to introduce you the first lesson from your course book A Voyage to Brobdingnag written by Jonathan Swift. So children, you can open your textbook and use your pencil to underline the new words and write down their meanings in your textbook. Before starting the detailed explanation of the lesson, it is very important for us to know something about the author Jonathan Swift. Jonathan Swift was an Anglo-Irish satirist. Satirist is a person who does social criticism in a humorous way. He is an essayist, political pamphleteer, poet and cleric who became Dean of St. Patrick's Cathedral, Dublin. He was born on 30th November 1667 in Dublin, Ireland. He was the chief literary figure of the 18th century. He has produced some great works like The Battle of the Books, A Tale of a Tub and The Gulliver's Travels. He was known for his pungent use of mockery without being very explicit in his works. He died on 19th October 1745 in Dublin. Dear students, you might have heard of many stories from your parents, grandparents, your friends or from your teachers. And I'm sure that you might have come across many stories of adventures like Sinbad the Sailor, Robinson Crusoe, Treasure Island and so on. Today we are going to learn about an adventure story of Gulliver. So let's get started. This given lesson, A Voyage to Brobdingnag, is an adaptation of a particular section that is part 2, chapter 2 from the book Gulliver's Travels. Before we start discussing the lesson in detail, let's see what happened in part 2, chapter 1. Gulliver's ship gets badly battered during a storm. The crew and the Gulliver make their way to an island called Brobdingnag so that they may repair the ship. To their surprise, the island is inhabited by giants. Gulliver is abandoned by the companions. He sees several of giants cutting down crops. The crops of that land is as tall as a tree. A farm worker finds Gulliver and delivers him to the farm owner. This book or this lesson is written in first person from the point of view of Lamuel Gulliver. Okay children, now let us go through the lesson. My mistress had a daughter who was nine years old. She was very dexterous at her needlework and skillful in dressing her doll. Her mother and she arranged a doll's cradle for me for the night. The cradle was put into a small drawer of a cabinet and the drawer was placed upon a hanging shelf for fear of rats. This was my bed all the time. I stayed with those people though it was made more convenient as I began to learn their language and make my wants known. Here, my mistress refers to the farmer's wife. This particular scene of the story begins with Gulliver describing his mistress' nine-year-old daughter as a kind and gentle girl. She was very dexterous at her needlework. Dexterous means to be skillful, especially with hands. Farmer's daughter was very skillful at her needlework and not only that, she was also very skillful in dressing her doll. Farmer's daughter had a doll's cradle that became Gulliver's permanent bed. The cradle was put into a small drawer of a cabinet. Cabinet means a cupboard with shelves or drawers for storing or displaying articles. She placed the cradle inside a drawer to keep Gulliver safe from the rats. Gulliver stayed with the family, farmer's family and staying with them made more convenient to him as he learned their language and started making his wants known to them. 
the young girl was very helpful to me she made me seven shirts and some other clothes of as fine a material as could be got which was in fact coarser than sackcloth she washed these clothes with her own hands she was like my teacher to teach me their language when i pointed to anything she told me the name of it in her own language so that in a few days i was able to call for whatever i wanted in the second paragraph gulliver explained how farmer's daughter became his caretaker and guardian she stitched seven cloths for him and it was coarser than the sack cloth coarser means rough or harsh in texture sack cloth means thick a rough material used to make sacks not only that she washed his clothes with her own hands she was like a teacher to him and she taught him their native language when gulliver pointed anything she told him the name of it in their own language within few days gulliver was able to call for whatever he wanted she was very good-natured and not more than 40 feet tall being short for her age she gave me the name grildrig which the family used and later the whole kingdom in english the word means mannikin we never parted while i was there i called her my glumdelclitch or little nurse in brobdingnag people were very tall even the 9 year old farmer's daughter was 40 feet tall she named gulliver grildrig in english the word means mannequin mannequin means a very short man in turn he called her glumdelclitch glumdelclitch means a little nurse it now began to be known and talked about in the neighborhood that my master had found a strange animal in the fields about the size of a splacknuck an animal in that country which was about 6 feet long but exactly shaped like a human being which it imitated in all its actions it seemed to speak in a little language of its own and had already learned several words of theirs it went erect on its legs was tame and gentle would come when it was called do whatever it was bid and had a complexion fairer than a nobleman's daughter of 3 years old in this paragraph gulliver explained how rumor spread through the whole area that the farmer had found a strange little creature which was about 6 feet long and it looked like a human being and the creature seemed to imitate human action perfectly and can even speak their language according to them the creature went erect on its legs and soft and gentle also it would come when it was called and was doing whatever it was asked to do and they opined that it had a complexion fairer than the nobleman's 3 years old daughter another farmer a friend of my master came on a visit to find out the truth of the story i was immediately produced and placed on a table where i walked as i was commanded i paid my respects to my master's guest asked him in his own language how he was and told him he was welcome just as my little nurse had instructed me this man who was old and dim-sighted put on his spectacles to see me better at which i could not help laughing very heartily for his eyes appeared like a full moon shining into a ch- chamber through two windows other people laughed too when they discovered the cause of my mirth but the old man was angry he was a miser and to my misfortune he advised my master to display me on market day in the next town in this paragraph another friend to plumdelcliff's father came on a visit to find out the truth of the story of the creature living in their house gulliver was immediately produced and he was placed on a table as per the instruction of plumdelcliff he welcomed the guest and asked him 
how he was in his own language. Farmer's friend was old and dim-sighted. He looked at Gulliver through his glasses, and Gulliver began to laugh at the sight of the man's eyes through the glass. Other people too laughed when they discovered the cause of Gulliver's mirth. Mirth means amusement. But the old man became angry and he was a miser. Miser means stingy. And to Gulliver's misfortune, he advised the farmer to take Gulliver into the market and to display him in the next town. When Glumdalclitch heard of this plan, she laid me on her chest and began to cry. She felt worried that harm would be done to me by some crude people who might squeeze me to death or break one of my limbs by taking me in their hands. She felt it was an indignity to me to be exposed for money as a public spectacle to the people. In this paragraph, Gulliver explained how Glumdalclitch reacted when she came to know about her father's plan to exhibit him in the market to earn money. She did not like her father's plan. She laid him on her bosom and fell a weeping with shame and grief. She apprehended some mischief would happen to him from the crude people. Crude means rough people. She feared that they might squeeze him to death or break his limbs. She felt what an indignity. Indignity means unfair treatment. What an unfair treatment Gulliver should conceive to be exposed for money as a public spectacle to the meanest of the people. Here meanest refers to the rough people or crude people. Now I conclude today's class. In the next class we shall study what will happen to Gulliver in the market. Until then, bye children.